Good morning. Uh, in the last lecture, we looked at a problem at how to solve uh, a beam problem using the displacement method. And in the end, I asked you, I gave you a problem which included a support settlement and we were going to say that we are going to look at that problem in this lecture. So, let me just reiterate that particular problem. What you have is this and the support has settled, the support settlement is 0 0.03 meters. So, what will be the deflected pattern look like if you look at it? where this is theta c and this is theta b. The two unknown rotations, the two degrees of freedom, displacements corresponding to the degrees of freedom. So, theta b unknown, theta c unknown. Again going back, what do we have? By compatibility condition, theta a b is equal to 0, theta b a is equal to theta b, delta b a. Now, this is interesting. What is delta b a? Delta b a in the previous case was 0, but here you see b a c. b has gone down relative to a. Okay. So, that means delta B A is not 0. What is it? Remember, delta B A was considered to be positive if B went up relative to A. Since it is going down, it is negative and the value is 0 0.03 meters. Let us look at member B C. Theta B C is equal to theta B. Theta C B is equal to theta C and delta B C B is equal to, now look at it, B has gone down relative to C. So, we can say that actually C has gone up relative to B, relative. Okay, so, it is plus, so it is plus 0, 3 meters. Note that we are given that E is equal to 200 GPA and I is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter fourth. Okay. So, these are what are given. So, now since we have no these, we can substitute them uh, into the equations. And what are the fixed end moments by the way? Since there is no loading, note that fixed end moment A B, fixed end moment B A, fixed end moment B C and fixed end moment C B are all 0. Okay? So, they are all 0. So, now substituting into the equations, what do we get? Well, let us see what we get. We get the equation m a b is equal to 2 e i by 10 theta b plus note that it is actually minus 6 e i l squared into delta, but since delta is negative, so this is going to be 6 100 into point zero 0.03. Okay. Then M B A is equal to 4 E I upon M B C is equal to 4 E I upon 10 theta B plus 
2 ei upon 10 theta c minus 6 ei upon 10 squared. Note that in bc delta b is positive, so that's why this is this way and c a 2 ei upon 10 theta b plus 4 ei upon 10 theta c minus 6 ei upon okay so if I uh, plug in the values of ei uh, see uh, what I get I get it equal to M A B is equal to two E I upon ten theta B see you plug in the value of EI. Note that I'm just going to go through a little bit. Let me show it to you. Uh, you might be a little bit confused. You see what uh, I'm doing is uh, 6EI upon 10 squared into 0 0.03. So EI is 200 GPA which if you write it in kilonewton. See, note that uh, everything is in kilonewton. So, if I write in kilonewton, 200 GPA is equal to 200 into 10 to the power of 9 newton per meter squared. So, this is going to be equal to 200 into 6 kilonewton per meter squared divided by 100 multiplied. This is 100 meter squared okay uh, multiplied by i what is i 2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 that is 6 e i upon l squared this is units are meter fourth and then we have 0 0.03 meters. Let's see what units I'll end up getting. If you really look at it, this is going to be equal to kilonewton, this is going to be meter fourth at the bottom, meter fourth cancels here, so it's going to be kilonewton meter. So these units, if you look at this, this goes into this, this goes into this three times, Okay, and this 3, if I bring it here, this will become 1. So this will become 6 into 6, 36, 36 into 2, 72 into 10, 720. That's what I have over here. So this is 720 kilonewton meter. So these are the units, and then uh, for AI upon 10 theta b plus 720 kilonewton meter mbc is equal to 4 ei upon 10 theta b plus 2 ei upon 10 theta c minus 720 the same and then mcb is equal to 2 ei upon 10 theta b plus 4 EI upon 10 theta C minus 720. Now the equilibrium equations are the same. Okay, So the equilibrium equations are MBA plus MBC is equal to 0 and MCB equal to 0. This gives us that MBA plus MB is equal to 8 EI upon 10 theta b plus 2 ei upon 10 theta c. If you have plus 720 minus 720, 
So that is that cancels out. This becomes 8 EI upon 8 EI upon 10 theta B plus 2 EI upon L theta C is equal to 0. And the second equation MCB equal to 0 gives us 2 EI upon 10 theta B plus 4 EI upon 10 theta C is equal to 720. Okay, solving for this gives us that theta B turns out to be equal to minus five hundred and fourteen upon EI radians and theta C is equal to two zero five seven plus two zero five seven upon EI radians. What does that mean? That if I were to draw the uh, deflected shape over here due to this settlement the system becomes this way. This is positive, I mean it is clockwise because this is negative and this is anti-clockwise because it is positive. Okay, so this is the deflected shape and now once we get theta b and theta c, we can substitute it back into the equations for mab. In other words, once I found out theta b and theta c, I can substitute theta b and theta c into these equations plug in the values of theta b and my final m a b is equal to plus 617.2 kilonewton m b a is equal to plus 500 and 14 kilonewton meter m b c is equal to minus 514.4 kilonewton meter and m c b is equal to 0 kilonewton per meter. And once you get these moments then you can draw the bending moment diagram just as we had done it last time. It is not very uh, different from what we have, I mean, it is not at all different from what we had done excepting that there is no loading. The interesting point to note here is that if you look at this, how much did the moments come out to be? Think about the loading. You had 120 kilonewton loading and then we had 500 kilonewton on 10 meters and what kind of react forces did we get? We got much less moments than we got due to a settlement of only 3 centimeters. Okay? So in other words, settlement problems can actually give rise to significantly higher stresses in structures than loads can and that is the reason why Okay, that support beams are always very, very support settlement can have very differential support set settlement, okay, can have extremely problematic consequences for your structures unless you def design them for these kinds of loads. Okay, so so much for uh, this particular uh, structure uh, analysis. 
I think I have done enough number of problems for uh, beams. And what I would like to now do is, I would like to go on to solving a particular problem for a frame. So that it gives you an idea of how the whole concept of frames, uh, I mean the displacement method can be used for frames. And you will see another very interesting thing and that is that uh, for frames, since in a beam we only had theta a b and theta b a. Okay? In frames you will see that delta b a will also come in and it will be an unknown. See in a beam the only problem that we did where delta b a came in was when we had support settlement where we knew the value of delta. In frames you will see that that will also be an unknown and therefore you have some interesting equations of equilibrium that you have to develop when you go through. So let me take a very simple problem and go through with it for you. Okay. So this is Okay. This is a frame that we have and if you look at this particular frame, what it does is it supported fixed supports at A and D and it is a single story, single bay frame with an overhang. Okay. And at the end of the overhang you have a load, you have one load in member BC. So, if you look at it, so therefore member AB has a load. PC has a load, CE has a load and CD has a load. Now, in this particular case, you will see that I am going to eliminate CE because I am not quite interested. You see, if you look at CE, can I draw the bending moment diagram for CE? Sure, I can. At this point, bending moment is going to be 0 and at this point, it is going to be 15 to 5 to 50 kilonewton meter. So, therefore, this is not I know the bending moment in here, so I do not really need to uh, know uh, the, uh, you know, I do not need to consider this. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to consider that this load is going to get transferred to C with the appropriate equivalent forces. So, if I look at this, with this problem, I can solve it as far, so I need to only solve A, B, C, D, okay, with given fact that the loading from C E comes out to be this. If we look at it, I can solve this problem. Fifteen meters, twenty meters, load here, load here. And this load I can transfer here 
as 50 kilonewton. But just transferring the load is not good enough. What happens? Equivalent load system, I also have to transfer a moment and the moment is equal to 250 kilonewton meter. So you see, now I'm solving A, B, C, D. Okay. So this is the problem that we have to solve using the displacement method. What's the first step? First step is to find out the degrees of freedom. Now how do we find out the degrees of freedom? Again, let me go through all the steps of the degrees of freedom. How many nodes? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 joints, 3 into 4 is unrestrained degrees of freedom, 12. How many restraints? Restraints are one, three here and three here because restraints, you are restraining the ball, all three degrees of freedom at this point and you are restraining all three degrees of freedom. So total six restraints. Constraints, I have three, actual deformation is neglected, three members, three constraints. So how many degrees of freedom? Three. What are those three degrees of freedom? Well, theta at B, theta at C and delta. So this delta can be, the, this delta is the same as this delta, okay, because B, C cannot actually deform, okay. So let me do that again, that I have theta B, theta C and delta. Okay. Now I am going to introduce some concepts and that is that what do those, in other words, see before I write down the slope deflection equations, I have to be able to relate these with respect to the member end deformations. Okay? So for that, I am going to now start a new procedure by which I am going to find out given each degree of freedom, how does the displacement occur so that I can always write down in terms of that displacement what the member end displacements are. Okay? And then when I take all three of them together, that becomes a sum total. Okay? So here I am going to be drawing What happens when you have theta b? I'm going to put. You see, since I need to evaluate it together, I'm going to draw it piece by piece. So theta b a is equal to one. How will the displacement look? Theta b a is one. So it's going to go like this. This is going to go like this. See, this point, this point cannot go because delta is equal to 0 and theta c is equal to 0. So, this, this has to be fixed and then this remains exactly this way. So, this is my 1, 1. Okay? And let me write down all the member end displacements relative to that. But first I will draw all of them and then I will write them down. Let me put theta c equal to 1. What is theta c equal to 1? You will see that if theta c is equal to 1, then this will go like this. This will go like this and this will come here. Okay? And then finally, delta is equal to 1. So, delta is equal to 1 is going to be this way 
and note that when delta is equal to 1, theta p and theta c equal to 0. So, this is going to go this way. The reason why I am doing this is that, you know, if I show all of them together, you're going to, it's going to look very, very complicated. Okay? So, what I do is, I take each one separately and then I know that all three act together. So, once I know all the shapes for uh, this is equal to 1 and here this is 1 and this is 1. Okay? So, once I have this, okay, I can write down each and every for member A, B, what are the deformations in terms of theta B, in terms of theta C, in terms of delta. Okay? And now, with this, look at how their deformations go. I am now going to write down the kinematic relationship and that is, what for member A B. What is theta B A B equal to? If you look at this, remember theta A B is always going to be 0 because at that particular point you have so theta B is equal to. What is theta B equal to? Let us look theta B A is equal to. Let us see theta B A. Theta B A when theta b is equal to 1, theta b a is equal to 1. So, theta b a is equal to 1 into theta b. When theta c is equal to 1, theta b is equal to 0. When theta delta is equal to 1, theta b is equal to 0. So, therefore, we are going to write down theta b a is equal to theta b only. Similarly, write, write down delta b a. When theta b equal to 1, what is delta b a? 0. When theta c is equal to 1, what is delta b a? 0. When delta is equal to 1, what is theta b a? Let us look at this. Delta b a b. So, a b has to go up this way for it to be positive. It is going down. So, it is actually negative 1. So, it is minus delta. Okay? Similarly, let us look at member B, C. What about member B, C? Theta B, C is equal to, what is B, C equal to? Let us look at it. B, C is equal to 1 into theta B plus 0 into theta C plus 0 into delta. So, that means theta B C is equal to theta B. What about theta C B? Theta C B is equal to 0 into theta B plus 1 into theta C plus 0 into delta. So, it is equal to theta C. Similarly, delta C B. Delta C B. C relative to B, 0 theta B plus 0 theta c plus 0 delta. Note that this has to move this way for it to be delta. So, it is, so delta c b is equal to 0. Member c d. Now, I am looking at member c d. So, this is where I am looking at it. Okay. So, if you look at it, I am looking here to here. What is member C D? Delta B A delta B C B C D is equal to zero delta theta B plus one theta C plus zero delta. So this is equal to theta. Theta D C fixed ten zero. Delta D C is equal to let's look at it. Delta C D is equal to 0 into theta b plus 0 into theta c plus, now let us look at this, what this means. If you really look at it, c d, d has to move this direction 
for it to be positive delta. However, if you really look at it, since this has gone up, we can say that relative to C, this has actually gone this way, so it is negative delta. So it's negative delta. Okay, so we have now got all the relationships between the member displacements, the member and displacements, and the degrees of freedom theta b, theta c, and delta. Okay, so now we substitute these into the equations. But before we substitute that into equations, we have to find out the fixed end moments. So we have to find out the fixed end moments uh, in AB, BC, and CD due to the loads. Now remember AB has a load, right? What is the load? AB, this is A, B, 10 meters, 5 meters, and at this point we have a 20 kilonewton force. Okay? So if you look at it, what is this going to give me? The fixed end moment. at a b is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to p and note that this is going to be this way, this is going to be this way. So this is positive, so this positive is going to be plus 20 into 5 squared into 10 upon 15 squared. Okay, so if you look at this, this is going to be equal to 22.2 kilonewton meter. BA, BA is going to be minus 20, it's negative, 20 into 10 squared into 5 upon 15 squared is going to be equal to minus 44.4 kilonewton meter. Okay, now let's look at what happens in BC. BC. VC has 100 kilonewton force acting 8 meters and this is 12 meters. So this is going to be this way, this way. So fixed end moment at BC is equal to plus 100 into 12 squared into 8 upon 20 squared. This is equal to plus 288 kilonewton meter. Okay, so and then fixed end moment at CB is equal to minus 100 into 12 into 8 squared upon 20 squared. This is going to be equal to minus 192. Okay. Now look at CD. CD does not have any load on it. So Fe, the fixed end moment in CD and DC are going to be equal to zero. Okay. So let us look at the equilibrium equations. If you look at the equilibrium equations, what we get is that M A B. MAB is going to be equal to two EI upon fifteen two EI upon fifteen multiplied by theta B and then plus 6 EI upon 15 squared 
into delta plus 22.2 kilonewton meter. M B A is equal to 4 E I upon 15 theta B plus 6 E I upon 15 squared delta minus 44.4. Okay. Then we have M B C is equal to 4. Now note it's 4 into 4. The E I itself is 4 E I. Okay. Remember that? So it's 4 into 4 E I upon 20 into theta B plus 2 into 4 E i upon 20 theta C and plus 288. Note that delta is equal to 0 so it doesn't contribute. Theta C B is equal to 2 into 4 E i upon 20 theta B plus 4 into 4 E i upon 20 theta C minus 192. Okay. And then finally M C D M C D is equal to 4 now again E i only upon 15 theta C plus 6 E i upon 15 squared into delta. Note that it's minus again, so it's minus minus plus. And that's it. There's, there's nothing else. There is no fixed end moment. And M D C is equal to 2 E i 15 plus 6 E i upon 15 squared delta. Okay. So, these are all the moments that we have. Okay? Uh, so, we've been able to write down the mo moment, uh, you know, the, the, these are the member end moments in terms of the unknown displacements uh, that we have. Okay? So, once we have done that, okay, then we have another aspect. Now, equilibrium now here equilibrium is going to get really really complicated let's let's look at what equilibrium actually entails and again now i'm going to separate it out so that you can understand what i am trying to say So, I am separating out all the members from the joints and representing them separately. Okay? And now, if you look at it, I am first putting down all the moments that we have computed and all the forces that we have. So, these are the moments that I have just I am putting them all in the positive. See, this is MAB, this is MBA, this is MBC, CB, M C D D C. Okay? So this happens to be M 
ए बी बी ए बी सी सी बी सी डी डी सी दीज आर द वैल्यूज दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी पुट डाउन जस्ट नाउ दीज आर ऑल इन टर्म्स ऑफ थेटर बी थेटर सी एंड डेल्टा the unknown displacements corresponding to the degrees of freedom so i've i've put them down now what i need to do is i need to actually put down all the uh, other forces that i have on the system so if you look at it this one has 20 kN here okay then uh, what else do i have i have let me just look back at the problem itself i have 20 then i have 100 now addition to that i have 50 and to 50 kN meter here anything else no well, that's it Okay, these are all the loads. Okay, so now what I need to be able to do is write down the equilibrium equations and note that uh, what are the equilibrium equations? One equilibrium equation obviously is moment equilibrium. So summation of all moments at b equal to zero. This, if you look at this, is going to give you that m. B A plus M B C is equal to zero. Similarly, one is moment. These are the see note. What is this moment? This is corresponding to the rotation. This corresponding to this rotation M C is equal to zero, and that's going to give you that M C B plus M. CD is equal to zero. Okay, is it? No, it's not. MCB plus MCD plus two fifty. So plus two fifty is equal to zero. Note that when you're taking equilibrium, the external loads also have to come in. So it's plus two fifty is equal to zero. These are the two equations corresponding to the two rotations. now i have a displacement corresponding to that what do i have well i have to write down an equation which says reactions have to be equal to zero and what reactions have to be equal to zero well let's see if i take the reaction that i get here and let's see what i get if you look at this this is going to be like this okay so the loading will be like this so let me just put it this okay so this is going to be this way so this is going to be this way so this is going to be this way and similarly you'll get it over here this goes this way so this has to go this way this will go this way so this has to go this way so, this. so the other equation that we get is if you look at it is going to be that this force plus this force this what is this force this is the reaction at a and this is the reaction at d okay the other equation is corresponding to this delta so it's going to be sigma fx equal to 0 of the entire and that's going to give me r a plus r d Minus twenty. This is the force is equal to zero. So this is my third equation, which essentially is this. Look at the other reactions. This is V A, V D. The other equation V A plus V D, okay, is equal to hundred plus hundred fifty 
is is not going to give me an additional equation. We will see that why that does not give me because note that see you will always see that since you have a rotational degree of freedom you have a moment equilibrium at B. Since you have a rotational degree at C you will have a moment equilibrium at C. Rotations go with moments okay, and displacements go with forces. So, since the displacement is in this direction I need a sigma f x equal to 0 to be able to generate that and that is the reason why I have. If I had any degrees of freedom in this direction then I would take V A plus V D. Okay? So, that is the overall uh, scope of things. Now, once you have these, these I know I can substitute them in. Okay? This one I have to derive, I can find out. How do I find this out? Well, I can find out that this is going to be equal to V A B, R A is equal to V A B okay? and R D is going to be equal to V D C. So, I can find out these from this equation. So, if you look at this, what is V A equal to? Well, let me evaluate that. V A is going to be equal to V A B is going to be equal to, I can easily evaluate it, it is going to be M A B plus M B A divided by 15. These are the moments of reaction due to this plus 20 into 5 upon 15. Okay? So, that is going to be V A B and then V D C is just going to be equal to M D C plus M C D upon 15. Okay? And you know M A B, M B C. If you put all of these together, uh, what you get is see M B A plus M B C gives you, let me uh, uh, write it down, M B A plus M B C gives me uh, 4 E i upon 15 theta b plus 16 upon 20 E i theta b okay uh, 4 e i plus 16 plus 8 e i over 20 theta c plus 6 e i upon 225 into delta plus 243.6 is equal to 0. That is my MBA plus MBC. And if I look at MCB plus MCD plus 250 equal to 0, MCB is going to be equal to 8 EI upon 20 theta B. plus 16 E i upon 20 theta c plus 4 E i by 15 theta c. Okay. Plus 6 E i upon 225 delta and then plus 250 minus 192 is going to be equal to 58 equal to 0. That is my second equation and my third equation is going to give me that 
is going to give me this this plus this minus 20 is equal to 0. Okay? Now, you can evaluate that. I am not going to go into uh, that detail. I will leave it up to you. In fact, what I can do is if you look at this, since these are all divided by 15, I can just multiply by 15 over here and I will get m a b. If you look at this, from this equation I get m a b plus m b a plus m d c plus m c d plus 300 is equal to 0. Okay? Because all I have done is I multiply that sorry minus 300 minus 300 is equal to 0. And all I need to do is substitute all these uh, terms in and uh, then essentially if you look at this let me do that. Okay? I mean why stop it at that? I am going to put that equal to 2 e i by 15 theta b plus 4 e i by 15 theta b. Okay? Then <coughs> okay, that is 4 e i by so that is 6 e i upon 15 delta b. Okay? Plus now, if you see M D C and M C D, okay, it's going to become. I'm going to just put it in six E I upon fifteen theta C, okay, and then if you look at it, it's going to be equal to plus M. Let me just go back. M A B has six plus six. Then I have M C D has six plus six. So this is going to become equal to. 24 E i upon 225 delta. Okay? And then I have 22 minus 44, that is minus 22 minus 22 plus mm, uh, minus 22 plus 3. Uh, minus 300. So, this is going to be equal to minus 322.2 equal to 0. Okay? So, now I have three equations. If you look at it, I will just put it down finally in an equation format. We will look at it in an equation format. This is going to be theta B theta C delta and on the other side I am going to have the values. It is going to be minus 243.6 minus 58 plus 322.2 and in here you will have all the expressions. For example, this plus this Okay, I can take E i outside and so E i will be 4 by 15 plus 16 by 20, 8, 6 by 20. Okay? So, so point 0.8 uh, plus this thing gives me uh, 380 and this is going to be uh, 16 by 15. Okay? So, 60. So, this is by 60, this is 16 plus 48. Okay? So, 64 by 60, this is going to be 8 by 20, this is going to be 6 by 225, this is going to be 8 by 20, this is going to be again the same 16 plus 48 upon 60 is going to be 6 upon 225 and this is going to be equal to uh, 6 by 15 6 by 15 is going to be 6 by 15 
and this is going to be 24 upon 225. So this equation, if you solve for it, uh, you can get theta b, theta c and delta. And I'm not going to go through these details. I'll leave it up to you to solve it. And once you get theta b, theta c and delta, you can find out these values. And once you find out these values, you can always draw the bending moment diagram for the given frame. Okay? So the only thing that difference that we had in a frame was that the displacement, you know, in a, in a um, beam, you only have rotations as degrees of freedom. In a frame, in addition to rotational degrees of freedom, you also have displacement degrees of freedom and therefore corresponding to displacement, you know, when you take equilibrium corresponding to rotations, you take a moment equilibrium equation. Corresponding to a displacement, you take a force equilibrium equation. Okay? And that is how you go about solving it. Okay? I am going to spend some more time over the next couple of lectures looking at a few more problems and seeing how we can solve those. Thank you. I hope I have been able to explain a little bit over the last two lectures on how to use the displacement method to solve beam and frame problems. Thank you.